What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one it's transfer tips for game week 10. So I'm going to go through some of the popular players being moved in and out of our squads and give you my opinion on whether they are good moves or not. If you enjoyed the video make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and make sure to check out Fantasy Football Hub. They've got a seven day free trial at the moment and up to 30% off. All the links you need are in the description below. Otherwise let's jump into it. So let's start off with Kieran Trippier and given that he scored over 50 points in the last five game weeks it's pretty difficult to sit here and come up with any kind of argument as to why you shouldn't buy him so i'm going to start off by saying he's just a great option i think we can all agree on that he plays one of the best defenses in the league very attacking as well he's running at 0.35 expected assists per 90 creates lots of chances every single game because of that he's great for bonus as well so when they keep a clean sheet he's always right up there and sometimes when he doesn't get a clean sheet he still gets bonus points as well so all round decent option and although i know He's not going to keep running at over 10 points per game like he has done the last five game weeks. I am conscious that last season he went on a ridiculous run where he couldn't stop scoring. So I think it's absolutely fine to want him in your team, right? He's just an all-round good FPL pick. Absolutely nailed on. We haven't seen any rotation because of Champions League or anything like that. So I do like him, of course. That's why I've got him in my team. There is a big difference between last season and this season, though, and that is his price, right? He started at 5 million, I believe, last year. Some of us were a bit slow to bring him into our teams, myself included. But once he was in, it was very difficult to justify selling him. This year, though, he's 6.9 million. Now, of course, if he keeps running at 6.56 points per match, which is what he's done so far this season, he'll be well worth that 6.9 million. But sacrifices have to be made at the moment especially if you're trying to fit Haaland and Salah in if you're willing to drop one of those players fair enough right Trippier is very easy to have but if you're not something has to give somewhere so for my wild card for example and look there's a few other things to consider but the big thing is do I want Trippier or do I want Son if I really want Son to stay in my team then Trippier probably just has to go and it's, he's not you know being sold because I think he's bad it's just that sacrifices have to be made. And at that price, I'm thinking, can I get clean sheets from defenders that are a lot cheaper, like Gabriel at 4.7, Simakas at 4.5? They're not better defenders than Trippier, but if they can rack up clean sheets in the good fixtures they've got, then Trippier has to get quite a few attacking returns to justify that extra price. It might be the Newcastle keep getting clean sheets, he keeps getting attacking returns, and Gabriel and Simakas get dropped or something like that. But I think that is a risk that I'm willing to take and obviously recently the assists have been crazy and I think one of the reasons he's done so well is because of the fixtures from game weeks five to nine they've played Brentford at home Sheffield United away Burnley at home West Ham away and Palace at home and he's got six assists in that time that is unsustainable right he is going to get plenty of assists this season he's not going to get that many in such a short period of time and if you look at the stats I mentioned that he's running at 0.35 expected assists per 90 but he's at 0.7 assists per 90. That is going to drop at some point. And I look at the fixtures they've got coming up, and I'll be honest, it's difficult to drop him this week because in the next three matches, they've got Wolves away and Bournemouth away. Really good potential for clean sheets there. I think the thing in the back of my mind is they're both away games. So I'm hoping that one of those teams can score. And in the middle, they've got to play Arsenal. Now, Newcastle, very strong team. And they've got Arsenal at home in game week 11, Chelsea at home 13, Man United at home in 14. They can get points in all of those games, right? So, you know, Arsenal's going to be difficult. Maybe they get a draw. They could potentially beat Chelsea and Man United. But will they get a clean sheet? That is the big thing. I think all of those teams could score. And that is kind of a risk that personally, at least at the moment, right? I haven't actually sold him for my team yet. I think I'm willing to take. So people that have transferred him in, I don't think... It's a bad decision because he's always going to be a good FPL pick because of all those things we've talked about. But I think if you're expecting the kind of points he's had recently, I just don't see that happening. Like Again, fixtures kind of always usually matter anyway. Not always, right? But usually they matter. And look, I think he's scored way more points than anyone predicted. But I do think we should have expected like four to five returns over the last five game weeks. And that's kind of what's happened and even more. I don't think that's going to happen with the fixtures they've got coming up. But longer term, game week 17 onwards, you might want him back. So maybe it's just not worth a transfer. So look, I'm not trying to sit on the fence here. I'm just trying to provide an argument for both sides. I think because of his price and the fixtures they've got coming up, you can assume that the amount of returns are going to go down a little bit. Doesn't mean they're going to go away completely, but it's not going to be as much as they've had. And if it's between like Trippier and Son, and you want to keep Son, then you've got to make that sacrifice. If you're willing to drop other players like Haaland, etc., 
then of course go for Trippier. But I think I'm going to go without him. And given that he's at nearly 50% ownership, it is a little bit of a worry. So despite scoring at the weekend against Brighton, there is another 100,000 FPL managers that have already sold Erling Haaland this week. And I think people are starting to get frustrated with the amount of returns given that he costs 14 million. And I kind of understand that, right? If we look at recent games, there was one goal and two bonus points against Brighton. He blanked against Arsenal, blanked against Wolves, only six points against Nottingham Forest and six points against West Ham as well so he hasn't really hurt anyone that hasn't owned him over the last few weeks but as I kind of always try and say that doesn't really matter it's all about what his prospects are going forward and I think if you look at the fixtures on paper there are four out of five games four out of the next five games that are maybe a little bit more difficult you've got Man United away and Chelsea away and I get it Man City are a better team Man United not playing that well at the moment but they're both away games right you just don't know what's going to happen in those kind of matches and then Liverpool at home and Spurs at home so there is some justification to go on without him and like I've just spoken about with Trippier it lets you get a much better squad overall so you can keep Son and have Saka and have Salah and have Trippier maybe even throw Trent in there as well so that could definitely work out and I think people that did it in game week 8, that kind of made sense because you had Arsenal away. But I just look at the next two games and think Man United away, if they continue to play like they did against Sheffield United, that is not going to be a good match for them. And if we look at Man United's games so far, they haven't really been battered by too many teams, but they have conceded goals against all the top teams they've played against, like the good attacking teams, I mean. So against Brighton, they conceded three goals. Arsenal was three as well, although if you remember that game, Man United were chasing towards the end and then that Jesus goal on the counter. So maybe that flattered Arsenal a little bit in that game, but still, they conceded three goals, two against Forest, two against Spurs as well. Not that I would consider Forest to be a top attacking team, but it just shows that Man United defence can be gotten at. And I just feel like at the moment with like Dallow, Lindelof, Maguire, I mean, Ram might be back, right? And Regulon might be fit as well. But I just, I just worry what Haaland might do to Man United. And then you run straight into... Bournemouth so I think you've got to look at it in terms of fixture blocks over the next five game weeks there maybe is some justification for getting rid of him but in the next two he could he could do quite well and then there's only three bad matches on paper before you're probably going to want to start getting him back in again and that's what I'm conscious of I keep saying that word by the way but that is what I'm thinking about because I am going to want him probably game week 15 Villa away, game week 16 Luton away, and game week 17 Palace at home. They do blank in game week 18. So if you got really lucky and he continued to do poor in those fixtures I've just mentioned, you could wait to get him after the blank, right? So just not worry about that, that blank fixture in game week 18 and get him from game week 19 onwards. But do you really want to go about Haaland for Luton away? Like you might talk yourself into not having him for Villa away, but Luton away, surely we have to have him back in for that game so the longer you leave it the less viable this move is so if you're going to do it i would suggest it has to be this week because you can't sell in before bournemouth at home and then it's only three bad fixtures on paper before they get good again in terms of the prospects right i've seen some comments like you know alvarez has scored nearly as many points and he's half the price and i get that but captaincy should be a factor as well like, are you genuinely happy to captain alvarez instead of harlan i would say probably not and in game week 11, you can absolutely captain Salah instead, right? I think he's got Luton away. But Bournemouth at home on paper is such a good fixture. And in game week 13, when Harlem plays Salah, he's probably the better choice out of those two. So there are a few fixtures over the next couple of game weeks where he could do well. He hasn't returned what we would have expected. I know some people are saying, like, maybe he's missing Kevin De Bruyne, but the guy's still scored, what, like, eight or nine goals already this year? He's running at 1.01 goals per 90 minutes his expected goals are still 0.73 per 90 yes he's 14 million and you do have to factor that in similarly to Trippier, is he worth it and if you're looking at those fixtures thinking i'll captain salah in 11 i'm not going to captain harland again until game week 16 then yeah i think it's perfectly viable to go without him but you've got to do it this week i think you're just not going to want to do it in 11 or probably after that all right, let's talk about Douglas Louise. All of a sudden, a very popular option in FPL. I think there might be 15 reasons for that. And look, the fixtures are good for Aston Villa. That's why people are looking at the likes of 
uh, Watkins, Cash, Diaby, Pau Torres, etc. But I think in two or three game weeks time, we're not still going to be talking about Douglas Louise. If I get any questions about him, it's probably going to be who should I sell him for rather than should I still bring him in. I know we just got that 15 pointer against West Ham. He scored the goal, took the penalty. And we should note that he is first choice penalty taker for Aston Villa. But we already knew that before the West Ham game and nobody was talking about him before that. So I don't see why... There's now this mad rush to get him in. It feels very knee-jerk to me. And if the penalties dry up, the attack and returns dry up as well. He's at 0.09 expected goals per 90 without penalties and 0.11 expected assists. Like I said on yesterday's video, there's defenders that are higher than that. So he's just not really an attack-minded player. He's brilliant for Aston Villa. Right? I'm sure he's going to be linked with other clubs in January, in the summer, etc. And they're not going to want him, go, him to go. But for FPL, I just don't think he's a good pick. I think there's more than enough other good midfielders to warrant a place in our teams. And if I was going to go for a cheap penalty taking midfielder, it'd probably be Cole Palmer, who's 0.5 million less and more attacking. I know the fixtures are more difficult, but as a long-term hold, I think he's way more viable. So Douglas Louise is not someone that I've even considered putting into my FPL team. Like I think lots of people want Salah at the moment. They want to hold Son. They might want to keep Madison now after he did well last night. You've got Saka as well, Matoma, Diaby, Bowen, etc. It's not just about his value. It's also about the spot he takes up. And I feel like right now, there's so many good cheap defenders that you don't need to necessarily put someone like Douglas Louise in. And if you do, you're probably just better off with Cole Palmer instead. So I just don't rate his, uh, him as an option. I know I've had some Aston Villa fans in the comments and... You know, people get annoyed about it. It's not about him as a player. It's just an FPL option. So am I writing him off? Pretty much, right? He could make me look stupid over the next three game weeks. But he is a definite transfer out sooner rather than later. And that's why I just don't think it's worth putting him in right now. So nearly 100,000 FPL managers have sold Matoma ahead of game week 10. And I don't quite understand it. If you've held on this long, I get that it's been frustrating. He's blanked three games in a row. He's dropped from 6.6 .6 back down to 6.5 million. But if you have held on this long, surely you'll hold on a little bit longer because the fixtures really do turn for the better for Brighton. They've got Fulham at home, Everton away, Sheffield United at home and Forest away next four game weeks. We know how attacking of a team they are. And Matoma himself is running at 0.29 expected goals per 90 and 0.24 expected assists. So his personal numbers are decent. I know there's some concerns about the amount of injuries Brighton have got. And they had another couple at the weekend. So March looks to be out for the long term. Welbeck could be out as well. So they are missing some players. But theoretically, they could still play Ferguson up front and then someone like Jao Pedro behind Matoma on the left. So they're only really missing someone on the right. They've got a Dingra and Sufati can play in general in that attack as well. So it's not like they're completely depleted, but obviously they are also playing in Europe as well. So I kind of get those concerns, but I just think those fixtures on paper are so good. And I think Matoma will start at least three of them, possibly four. So even though he has blanked recently, look at the fixtures. Man City away, Liverpool at home, Villa away. They're always going to be a bit more difficult. And I also think... That Villa game was one of those where just everything went Villa's way. They were very good in that game. Right? I'm not trying to take anything against uh, away from them. But I just wouldn't expect that to happen too often to Brighton moving forward. And in game week 14, when he plays... Oh, sorry, when Brighton played Chelsea away, that's almost a perfect jump-off point to go to in Burma, who has Luton at home that week if you don't already own him. But also... If you don't want to get rid of Matoma, or you've got a different way to get in Burma, or you just don't want him, whatever the situation is, after Chelsea away, they then got Brentford at home, Burnley at home, which are another couple of decent fixtures. Then it's Arsenal away, which is a bit tricky, but then it's Crystal Palace away in game week 18. So I think Matoma is one of those players where, in the short term, he's very good. And then if you can jump off, because you've got the spare chance for happy days, but if you have to keep on hold of him a bit longer, it's not really the end of the world. And I think I mentioned this on the wildcard video yesterday, his minutes are going under the radar a little bit because we think about Brighton players, well, they all get rotated. They all have their minutes managed. But actually, Matoma's played 80 plus. Well, he's played 90 minutes in seven of the nine. He's played 80 in one of the others. And then he played one half against Bournemouth. So that's the only game where there's been a little bit of rotation. And I think there will be constant rotation in that Brighton team. But I think there's a couple of players in there who are always going to play when they're fit and available. For the most part, anyway, that's like Pascal Gross, for example, Estepinian when he's fit, and Matoma is one of those players too. And you look at the fixture run they've got coming up. So they've just played Man City on Saturday. They're playing Ajax um, in the Europa League on Thursday. Can Matoma then play against Fulham at the weekend? I think it's definitely 
possible. I mean, if he was to play the full 90 minutes against Ajax, maybe you'd be a little bit concerned. But I don't think he's going to get rested for more than one of the next four matches, right? And the, the Forest game is after the international break anyway. So I think he looks like a really good pick. I think people at the moment should be thinking about possibly bringing him in. There might not be space in your midfield, but at least give it some consideration. I don't think I'd be selling him if I had him. I just think there's lots of good midfielders right now, but most of the ones that you'd want to bring in this week are a lot more expensive. Like if you're looking at, if you're doing Matoma to Diaby, for example, I just don't think that's worth a transfer. Yes, Diaby looks very good this week, but the Brighton fixtures are also excellent. And look how bad defensively Fulham were last night against Spurs as well. It's not like Brighton are a team of slackers when it comes to attacking. So yes, they got a few injuries. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference in terms of what Matoma does in FPL. And I think he looks great for the next three to four weeks. So I want to talk about Simicast because I'm still seeing some questions about whether or not to bring him in. Is he worth the risk? Is he going to lose his place and stuff like that? And I just look at it and think he's a £4.5 million Liverpool defender. Liverpool have great fixtures. The only game in the next six matches that I wouldn't want to play him in is Man City away. And the player ahead of him in the pecking order for that left back spot is out for two to three months. This is just too much of a potential bargain. And I think it's one of those cases where the massive upside outweighs the small risk of someone else playing left back instead like i'm not sitting here and telling you that can't happen right simicas might get benched at some point maybe they put gomez in there which Klopp mentioned they build up with the back three trent inverts etc but i just think there is also a chance that simicas starts all of these games right or at least five in six and that is probably enough for a 4.5 million defender now i don't think he's so good that that has to be your transfer this week if you've got trippier and maybe, I don't know, Trent or whoever it is, or, you know, a Spurs defender against Crystal Palace away, an Arsenal defender against Sheffield United at home. You don't have to worry about having Simicass as well. But if you're looking for a cheap defender this week to fund another move, I think he looks really good. And if I was bringing, him hit, uh, bringing in him or an Arsenal defender this week, I'd probably go for Simicass first because he's got Forrest at home and Luton away versus Sheffield United at home and Newcastle away for Arsenal. So, look, he's not risk-free. But I do think that upside outweighs any potential disadvantage. And for that reason, I think he's a good pick, right? If you're someone that's really worried about the minutes and only wants players that are definitely going to start every single game week, which is not a bad strategy for FPL, maybe don't buy him. But I think he's fine. He's already gone up from 4.4 to 4.5. Definitely worth buying. I don't think he's going to rise to 4.6 anytime soon. This is the price change um, page on Fantasy Football Hub. Completely free to use. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um... And actually, they've changed it now, so it looks pretty cool, right? So it shows you how many transfers are coming in, the progress. When they get to 100%, they're likely to rise. It tells you when they're likely to rise as well. Again, not 100% accurate, but pretty close. And if we look at Simicass, he's 18.9% uh, to rise. So there's no rush to get him in ahead of Friday's deadline. You can give yourself a bit more thinking time, but he is going to continue to get transfers in this week. So yeah, just a good option. So people are starting to sell James Ward-Prowse ahead of what is a pretty good fixture run for West Ham. So they got Everton at home in game week 10, Brentford away in 11, Forest at home in 12, and Burnley away in game week 13. So from that point of view, it seems quite similar to the Matoma situation, where if you've held on this long, yes, it's frustrating because he's been blank in the last few game weeks, but the good fixtures are about to start now. So there probably isn't that mad rush to get rid of him. Now, to be fair... When I'm looking at my wild card this week, I am looking at Matoma. I'm definitely not looking at James Ward Prowse. But if you're someone that already owns him and you've got a different fire to put out or another player that's a little bit more of a priority to bring in, I don't think there's any harm for keeping him for Everton at home. Like his underlying numbers are still pretty decent 0.22 expected goals per 90, 0.33 expected assists. If he can keep that up, he will tick over with points this season. So I think with the next four fixtures they've got, it's perfectly viable to keep hold of him. I probably wouldn't bring him in. I think there's better ways to use your midfield spots. I'm not a fan of James Ward Prowse and FPL, as you probably know by now. But I think he's okay to keep because of his price. I think what probably happened is he returned for four games in a row against Chelsea, Brighton, Luton, and Man City. All of a sudden, you think he's never going to stop getting points. And people have maybe brought him in a little bit early. Like the really good fixtures for West Ham start now. Before that, they had Villa away, Newcastle at home. I mean, Sheffield United at home wasn't bad, but before that, it was Liverpool away. So the last four game weeks haven't been that easy. And to be fair, West Ham have scored in all of them. They've got two goals against Newcastle, one against Villa. Ward Prowse maybe could have been in on that action and just so happens he wasn't at that point. But I think fixtures do often matter, as I'll keep banging on about all season. 
and like i said the good ones are about to start now so i wouldn't be bringing him in if you don't own him but if you've got him you could make a case to keep hold of him i know some people are now saying well we got unlucky because he's been moved position and to be fair if you look at the lineups against aston villa he was playing in the deeper two uh, alongside alvarez and it was so checking the number 10 that was also the same for the newcastle game right and if you look at previous fixtures like sheffield united ward prowse was playing as the number 10 so i kind of get that but looking at another match which was luton i think in this case a bit earlier he didn't play number 10 in that game either so it's not a case that he's always played uh, sorry that he's always played number 10 and now he's playing deep it has happened in the past so he is one of those players that's not always going to play in an advanced role because of the type of player he is so yeah i wouldn't panic on it panic on him just yet but he's not someone I'd be looking to bring in anytime soon. So let's end by talking about Brian in Burmo, fresh off his 14 points against Burnley in game week nine. If there's one lesson we've learned over the last two game weeks, unless you're on wildcard, don't sell players before they play Burnley. And Burmo just did really well in game week nine. Sterling did well the week before. But with in Burmo, as boys to men said, it is the end of the road. Or is it? Probably is, yeah. But maybe not in all cases. And I'll come on to that in a minute. So Brentford have next four matches Chelsea away West Ham at home Liverpool away and Arsenal at home overall pretty difficult on paper and if you're on wildcard I think there's other players in and around in Burmo's price that are better options to target because they've got better fixtures so the likes of Matoma Diaby if you've got a bit more money to spend Bowen as well I think they're all better picks for the next four game weeks and if you're looking at your team and you're not wildcard, and you're thinking, well, everything else looks good. I've got the spare transfer to use on Burmo to bring one of those players in. Absolutely fair enough. You should go ahead and do that. But if you've got other fires to put out, would he be the worst player to keep hold of? I don't think he would. Like Chelsea away is not easy, and neither is West Ham at home in game week 11. But that's not such a bad fixture, right? For a player that's nailed on, still got great underlying stats, is on penalties as well, always plays 90 minutes too, or pretty much always. He just wouldn't be the worst pick to keep hold of for the next two game weeks. And look, after that, the fixtures get tougher again. Liverpool away and Arsenal at home in game weeks 12 and 13. But from 14 onwards, the fixtures are very good for Brentford in general. And if you can bench him in the blank in game week 18, you then got him for the potential double in game week 20. I've spoke about this already. Yes, it's a tricky double, but the fixtures before and after are pretty decent for him Burma. so i think he's one of those players that because of the next four fixtures absolutely you can sell but let's say you've got one transfer right and you've got rashford in, and in Burmo, and your choices are rashford to saka or in Burmo to diaby i know which move i'll be making right i'd be getting saka in for rashford because i think saka and in Burmo is better than rashford and diaby like you might have a different tro- choice you'd have to weigh that up for each of you uh, each of yourselves individually but that's the kind of scenario where maybe it's okay to keep hold of in Burmo. Because 14, Luton at home, Brighton away in 15, Sheffield United away in 16, Villa at home in 17. Then you've got the blank. Then you've got Wolves at home in 20. Possible double, uh, sorry, Wolves at home in game week 19. Possible double in game week 20. And then game week 21 is Forest at home. I think after that, it's African Cup of Nations. But I think before that, he just looks like a great pick. So he just want, I've spoken about this quite a lot, but he's just one of those where... You can easily keep hold of him because of what he offers, right? You're not going to get an early sub like sometimes you get with Diaby. You haven't got that risk of him being benched like maybe you do with Matoma. Plus, he's on penalties as well. So I think the next two game weeks are okay. I think if you get through those, you'll probably just keep hold of him for the long term. So not an absolute must keep, but there are some circumstances where maybe I would do it. I'm going to leave that video there. If you've enjoyed it, give it a like. Hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube. If you're listening on podcasts, make sure to rate five stars. And as always, if you want to check out Fantasy Football Hub, links in the description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you tomorrow.